Welcome to Daz Geek. So you've been asking for the Manjaro Arm review. So you want me to take a look at Manjaro Arm on the Pinebook Pro, and that is what we're on right now. And I've also, as an added bonus, decided to do this entire video here, or at least the first half of it, with my face on it, which is a bonus in itself. I'm sorry but to show you really the quality of the webcam that's built into the Pinebook Pro, which leaves a lot to be desired, as I mentioned before. And again, these are not deal breakers. This doesn't mean don't go out and get one. I absolutely love my Pinebook Pro. It is one of the most used laptops in my house right now. It's just so easy to grab and do something really fast on. It was $199. It's just a really fun device. But with that said, that doesn't mean it doesn't have its little quirks here and there. And you could see, you know, while you could probably do video on this device, you know, a video conference or teleconference, I wouldn't recommend it um, because the camera quality is low enough that you can see when I move, it's very delayed and things like that. And it's a pretty tiny picture here we've got in the corner, but it works. You know, I mean, the audio and the video are going to be delayed from each other, but it works. So to start with, one of the things that I love about the Manjaro edition is the super awesome App Store. With the, If you're used to Manjaro, you're already familiar with this. So you just go to the Add Remove Software uh, tool here, and you're going to have all of your packages in this nice little GUI that you can search for and install. You even have nice categories here if you wanna search for something like games. It's just really well laid out and has allowed me to find a lot of applications that work in ARM. Now, being this is an ARM-based laptop, not every application has been programmed to work on ARM, so not everything will install. Keep that in mind. So if you see something really cool, that's great. It may not work for you. Now, all the steps and things and tips and tricks that I'm going to go through in here, not a lot of tips and tricks because I did most of those in the Debian video, but you can find those on my website, dosgeekcommunity.com under Brain Dump. You'll see a link there for Pinebook Pro on Jaro, and that's where you'll go. So the coolest thing that I want to start with about Manjaro Arm and the Pinebook Pro is the fact that you can install this on a micro SD card and you do not have to get rid of the custom Debian that comes with your Pinebook Pro. So if you want to utilize both, now 99% of the time I'm in Manjaro Arm, but there are some cases, and I'll give you some examples specific to audio, in which I prefer to be in Debian right now until they get some of the little quirks worked out. Now, in that case, once I've burned Manjaro here, I just go to Manjaro's website, go to Editions, Arm, Pinebook Pro, and I download KDE Plasma or XFCE. Now, you know me, I'm going to go with XFCE every time, but Plasma is beautiful too. So if you're a Plasma fan, you can download that version. You burn it onto your micro SD card using something like Etcher, and then you plug in your micro SD card, you power off your machine, power it back on. It's going to boot from that micro SD card. You can install it on your micro SD card. And then when you want to go back to Debian, you just turn off your computer, you eject the micro SD card, you repower on your machine and you're back in Debian. And that is a really cool feature of this laptop. Now, one of the things you're going to want to enable here, likely, because again, you have a lot of great packages available, but not everything is available in ARM yet. So you want to maximize your ability to get packages. That means install flat packs. I have instructions for that on the tips and tricks section and install snaps as well. That way you've got flat pack snaps there, but you can also go under here in preferences. And once you type in your password, we can enable the AUR. So you have the Arch user repository at your disposal as well. So if we go over here to AUR, we click enable AUR support. And then once that's enabled, it'll probably ask you to type in your password. When you do a search for a specific piece of software, it will also look through the AUR. So if something's available there, you can grab it. It's not available there. If you've installed your snaps, you've installed flat packs, you can try one of those and see if your package is available there. So you've got a lot of different options. Now, the software that I've installed to this point includes mega.nz. So that is what I use to store non-important, non-secure files out there in the cloud that I use for videos or anything else. Uh, Audacity for audio editing. So I've edited audio podcasts in this device here. Chromium browser, Bomber, which is a game arcade, FileZilla, HexChat for IRC chat, OpenShot, which is a video editor, 
and I showed in the Debian version that I was able to edit and render video. Is it fantastic for that? No, it's a low powered ARM device, but it's capable of it. And that's pretty cool. Telegram uh, is a must have, and thankfully that's available. Genie is a nice lightweight IDE, but we also have Visual Studio Code OSS. So if you're a Visual Studio Code fan, you have that. I installed the Phronics Test Suite and I've run the benchmarks for Phronics Test Suite, which you can check out as well. I'll have a link to those and audacious so a lot of good programs here that i've installed so far a lot of big name programs some of the core ones that you'll use but if you can't find the program like i use simple note to take notes in and that's not available in the arm version so what i did here is i just right clicked in xfce created a launcher here and basically with the launcher the command you would use uh, in the launcher is Firefox. So the name of the program you want to launch, I want it to launch the Firefox browser and then the web page I want it to open. So thankfully I can edit my notes right there in the browser. So I don't have to have the native application downloaded. So that's your other option for getting software. If there's something specific, hopefully it has an online version and you can do some work there as well. Now, if you head out here to the openbenchmarking.org, you'll see three of the test results that I've posted here. We have the Manjaro ARM before an update that was released on December 15th, after an update was released. So post update, and that was a request from Pine64 uh, to do that. So I put those benchmarks out there. Again, not all the benchmarks will run in the Phronics test suite, but if you're interested in looking at them, as well as the Debian test suite that I ran here, you can go check those out and see some of those results. Again, you got to keep in mind, this is an ARM based device. So, you know, you're not expecting to get, you know, gaming machine level performance out of this device, but it does really well for what it is. And that's really the story for this laptop as a whole. It's just a really fun device to have around. And because of its low cost of entry at $199 for a brand new laptop, it's just a really fun device to play with. Now, many of you have made comments in the videos. Well, you can get a used laptop that's, you know, x86 and uh, more powerful for around $199 as well. And that's true. You're inheriting other people's potential problems. But if you are somebody who's savvy with a computer can fix it and you're sure you found one that you can load Linux on it and you want to go through that install process and all of that stuff that's available to you and you're not wrong by any means. However, some people just wanna buy something, boot it up and have Linux running right there on it without any work, as well as supporting the Linux community and ecosystem here. And that's what the Pinebook Pro does, but certainly you do you. You get whatever machine or thing floats your boat. It's all your choice. I love that we have this option out there and I love this little device, very high quality for the price you pay for it. Plus. Those $199 used laptops, you're going to have a hard time getting one that's as thin and light as this little device for that same price. And that's what makes this so appealing too, is because when I'm traveling, I can throw this in my bag along with my work laptop and I don't really feel the extra weight there. Whereas if I had two full size thick laptops going into my laptop bag, well, it starts to get heavy when you're hauling around an airport a little bit. So I mentioned on the Dosky community webpage, you go under here, brained up. If you want to get a list of all these tricks, tips and tricks, I've got the Debian tricks here. I have the Manjaro tips and tricks, and you can see these are the items that we are going through in this video, but it includes the steps to actually get the installs done. Now, one of the things you may notice in the Manjaro version that is missing here is the CPU power. Well, I have it loaded, but you may notice when you install it, you don't have that power governor option to switch from performance mode to on-demand mode and things like that that's built into the Debian custom version, which I believe uses kind of a Mate applet uh, to do that. Well, we can do the same thing here in Manjaro ARM. You have two options. So the first one is just to install CPU power in the CPU power GUI. And I'll show you what that looks like here. So if we do the CPU power GUI, and this will allow us to set our governor from performance, power save, user space, on demand, conservative, schedule, util. And we can also set minimum and max frequency here. This is a perfectly viable option that works in my testing. But you have another option here, which is to enable CPU power dot service, start CPU power dot service. Then you install the XFCE4 frequency plugin. And down here in your taskbar, so you, once you install that, then you'll go to add new items and you'll do the frequency plugin here. 
frequency monitor shows the monitor and the governor you'll install that you'll get this little prompt here which you can customize by the way and when you open that up you also have the ability to by core set whether you want performance uh, or any of these options individually so these are available to you i pretty much keep this machine in performance mode because if i'm watching you know youtube videos or anything else i don't want any stuttering i don't want any feedback in performance mode seems to be the best but if i was on a trip and i was reliant completely on the battery i would probably change that to more of a conservative mode so i get the most out of my battery two options there and then a listing of all the software that i've installed so that's it this is kind of a tour around manjaro the arm edition here uh it's beautiful if you're used to using manjaro you'll already uh, be very used to this machine and the layout and especially if you use the xfce desktop um, it's very well done i find that i think it's snappier than the debian version it just feels faster but that could just be me um, and the some of the benchmark tests actually shows the debian version being uh, faster so uh, depending on the application and what you're doing uh, your results may vary there and of course the settings that you leave your machine in on but overall just amazing now there are a couple of things that have been fixed and a couple of issues still outstanding so manjaro arm when it first released had an issue where the wi-fi would drop out it had an issue where you couldn't use bluetooth devices those have all been fixed i've been able to pair bluetooth headphones with the device no problem listen to my music sounds great it works with the new sony's which i'll be doing a video on soon as well you can also, of course, plug in your headphones, but this is where one of the quirks come in here is that when you plug in headphones to this device, it will play through your headphones, but it will also play through your speakers. So that's an issue that they're still working on in the Manjaro ARM version. I have not noticed that same problem in the Debian version, but there are updates constantly happening to this ARM version. So big shout out and thanks to the team working on Manjaro ARM. You're doing an amazing job and I've just seen the progress week after week. It just gets better and better and better. And I absolutely love it. So thank you so much for the work that you're doing on that. Otherwise, this is it. It's very similar to, um, you know, running the Debian version, except it's Manjaro and Arch. And if you're used to using those commands and you want to have more access to certain software uh, that's available, say in the AUR and things, it's there. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much for watching the video. Make sure to go check out destinationlinux.network so you can check out the podcast I'm a part of, Destination Linux Podcast, as well as the other content out there from things like This Week in Linux, Linux for Everyone, Ask Noah Show, all a part of this. Plus, we're supporting a charity this month, Free Geek, which is an amazing charity. So go check out and consider donating some hardware to them, help close the digital divide, help fight for a right to repair, and help reduce e-waste out there super important and would appreciate anybody donating their uh, money or their equipment to that important charity and it's a tax write-off potentially as well for you so take a look into that that's my video until next time get out there and fill your brains don't forget to subscribe and make them subscribe to this video